This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. You can also use the promo code MTGMUDSTA for 5% off your orders from Face to Face Games, Canada's largest Magic the Gathering store, with qualified orders getting free shipping Canada wide. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game features Mark, Derek, and Chris, with Mark playing a Lend of the Dusk Rose, Derek playing Kataki Wars Rage, Chris playing Blind Seer, and I am playing once more my Shorakai Genesis Engine. Because it was filmed in the studio, we didn't keep opening hands, but Derek wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws, plays a Plains, and casts Land Tax. I have a Sajiri Refuge, which comes in tapped and gains me one. Chris plays Manamo, passing a mark. Mark plays a Swamp and casts Indulgent Aristocrat. Derek has a Plains and casts a turn 2 Kataki. I play a Halimar Depths, rearranging my top 3 as it comes in and pass turn. Chris plays an Island and casts a Volodin Mystic, passing. Mark plays a Plains and swings the Indulgent Aristocratic Chris, who decides not to block. This has Mark gaining one and dealing one and passes to Derek. Derek plays a Plains for turn and then casts a Dranith Magistrate and goes to combat. He swings his commander Kataki at Mark. After that, he passes and during his end step, Mark uses Swords to Plowshares on the Dranith Magistrate so he can actually play a game. I draw and play an island. I cast Ethereum Sculptor and pass to Chris. Chris draws and plays a Riptide Laboratory. He then casts a Sword of Hearth and Home and passes to Mark. Mark draws and plays a Plains and casts Maverin Fane. Going to combat, he swings the Indulgent Aristocrat at Derek, making a 1-1 Vampire token from the Maverin trigger and passes turn. Derek draws and plays a Field of Ruin. He then cycles a Secluded Step and passes. I pay the 1 to Kataki on my upkeep and draw. I play an Island and cast a Palladium Mirror, passing to Chris. Chris pays the 1 for his sword and draws for his turn. He equips the sword to the Mystic and going to combat, swings it at Derek to deal 3. Chris gets to find an Island off the sword trigger and after that, passes. Mark draws and plays an Urza Saga. He then goes to combat and swings the Indulgent Aristocrat at Chris, making another Vampire token from the Mavern trigger. After combat, he casts Alenda and then passes turn. During his end step, Derek uses the Field of Ruin to destroy Urza Saga, and we all go and find a basic. Derek gets to go and find three planes from his land tax and draws her turn. He plays one, and then casts a Grafdigger's Cage, passing to me. I tap my Palladium Mirror on my upkeep to pay for my two artifact triggers thanks to Kataki, and draw. I play a Cast an Arden Veil, and then Shorakai, and pass. Chris pays the one for the Sword Trigger, and draws. He plays at Arcanus the Omnipotent, and moving to combat, swings the Mystic at Mark for three, who can't block. Chris gets to find an island off the trigger from connecting, and after that, passes. Mark draws and plays a Swamp. He goes to combat, swinging Maverin Fane at Chris. This has Mark being able to make another Vampire token from Maverin attacking, and after combat, casts a Dothy Voidwalker. With nothing else, he passes. Derek gets to go and find more planes from the Land Tax trigger, and pays the one for Grafdeer's Cage on his upkeep, and draws. He plays a land, but with nothing else, passes a turn. I have to pay 3 mana from Kataki for my artifacts, and draw for turn. I play a Plains and activate Shorakai to draw 2 and discard 1 and make a pilot token. I then cast a Replication Specialist and pass to Chris. Chris once more pays for the sword in his upkeep and draws. He activates Arcanus to draw 3, and moving to combat, swings the Mystic at Derek for 3. Chris gets to find an island and decides to blink something finally, blinking Arcanus. 
After that, he casts the Blind Seer, and then douse, and passes. During his end step, Mark sacrifices a vampire token to the indulgent aristocrat to put a plus one plus one counter onto all of his vampires, and moves to his turn. Mark draws, and plays Esper Sentinel. He goes to combat and swings the Dothy Voidwalker at me, and Maverin goes at Chris. Mark gets to make a vampire token from Maverin's unattack trigger, and Chris and I both take the hits, and after that, Mark passes. Derek continues to find planes from his land tax, and pays for the cage, and draws. He plays Elspeth Conquers Death, and targets Alenda. Mark responds by sacrificing another token to pump his team, and then sacrificing Alenda to get a bunch of tokens. And once that's resolved, sacrifices another token to pump his team again. With nothing else, Derek passes. I pay for my artifacts on my upkeep, and draw. I then sacrifice the Palladium Mirror to anchor to reality, going to grab a Mobilizer mech. I then pay for the Replication Specialist to make a copy of it, and then crew it up with my original pilot token. Because the mech gets crewed, I'm able to crew up another vehicle, and Shorakai becomes crewed as well, but I don't have any good attacks, and just pass. Chris pays for the trigger to keep his sword, and draws, and uses Arcanus to draw three. He then plays a Future Sight, and doesn't pay for it, which lets Mark draw a card from the Esper Sentinel. Chris then follows up with a Rain Academy Chancellor, and goes to combat. The Mystic once more goes at Derek, and after it connects, Chris gets to find a land, and we pass turn. Mark pays for his Esper Sentinel on his upkeep, and draws. He plays an Ashnod's Altar, and goes to combat. He swings the Indulgent Aristocrat at Derek, and Maverin at Chris, and Derek jumps with Kataki while Chris declares no blocks. Mark gains a bit more life from the lifelink, and after that, passes turn. Derek gets three lands from his land tax trigger once more, and draws. Elspeth Conqueror's Death takes up to its second chapter, and Derek then plays out an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. He down takes the dragon to effectively exile the board, and after that, passes. I draw and play an Unsettled Mariner, and then a Mind Link Mech. With nothing else, I pass to Chris. Chris draws and plays an Island. He casts Blind Seer and then a Commander's Plate, equipping it onto the Seer. He then equips a Sword of Hearth and Home and passes to Mark. Mark draws and then plays a Keeper of the Accord and a Zulpor Cutthroat. Derek draws and plays a Plains. He casts an Endless Atlas and then recasts Kataki. And then up takes Ugin to bolt my Unsettled Mariner after he pays the one. After that he passes, and Mark gets a land off his Keeper of the Accord trigger at the end of turn. I pay to keep my Mind Lick mech around, and draw. I then cast a Cultivator Caravan, and crew the Mind Lick mech to swing it at Ugin, who finally gets taken out. With nothing else, I pass. Chris pays 2 for his artifacts on his upkeep, and then moves to draw. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Wizard, and casts Cowardice. Moving to combat, Chris then swings the Blind Seer at Mark, dealing 8, and grabs another island from the Sword Trigger. He then passes, with Mark grabbing another land from the Keeper. Mark pays for his Ashland Altar on the upkeep, and draws, and plays a Forsaken Sanctuary as his land for turn. He then casts Return to Dust, targeting Commander's Plate and Cowardice. Chris responds by using Blind Seer to bounce the Keeper of the Accord, Kataki, and Pilot Token, and the spell then resolves, exiling the artifact and enchantment. Mark then plays out a Dolmen Gate, passing, with Derek activating Endless Atlas during his end step to draw a card. Derek draws and plays a Plains. He casts a Knight of the White Orchid, going to grab another Plains, and once that's done, casts Approach of the Second Sun gaining 7 more life, and putting 7 from the top. After that, he recasts Kataki, and passes. I pay 2 to keep my artifacts around, and draw. I then cast the Solemn Simulacrum, going to find a Plains, and pass. Chris pays the 1 for his sword on his upkeep, and draws. He then casts the Finale of Revelation, where X is 10, drawing 10, and untapping 5 lands, and gaining no maximum hand size. 
He then plays Thada Adele, Soul Ring, and a Weather Seed Fairies before going to combat. Chris swings the blind seer at Mark, who chumps with the Zulaport Cutthroat, and as it dies, drains the table for one. With nothing else, Chris passes. Mark pays the one for the altar and draws. He plays a Keeper of the Accord and a Sanctum Seeker and passes. Derek pays two for his artifacts and draws. He activates Endless Atlas, drawing a card, and plays a Core Cartographer, but decides not to search because his approach is coming up. With nothing else, he passes, with Mark making a Soldier during his end step from the Keeper trigger. I pay to keep my vehicles alive on my upkeep and sacrifice the Solemn Simulacrum to draw. I then draw for turn and recast Shorakai and pass. Chris pays for his artifacts as well and draws. He then plays a Sludge Monster, sliming the Sanctum Weaver, and casts a Coast Watcher. Chris follows up with the Training Grounds and moves to combat. He swings the Blind Seer and Thada Adele at me, which crabs him an island and steals Mirage Mirror out of my deck after they connect. After that, Chris passes and Mark gets to go and find a land on his end step from the Keeper. Mark pays for his artifacts and draws. He then casts Shadrix Silver Quill and moving to combat, gives me an inkling with Shadrix while he draws a card and loses a life. He swings the Slime Sanctum Weaver at Derek, who takes the hit for two. In his post-combat main phase, Mark sacrifices a vampire to his Ashnod's altar, and using that plus more mana, recasts Alenda. Derek pays his taxes and draws. He plays an Archon of Ameria and activates the Endless Atlas again, drawing a card and passing while Mark once more makes a Soldier token and gets to grab a land from the Keeper trigger. I pay for my taxes and draw. I play an Azarius Chancery as my land for turn and bounce a land back to hand before casting Intruder Alarm. I then activate Shorakai to make a pilot and loot. With the Intruder Alarm trigger on the stack, I crew up the caravan with the pilot so they both untap. After that, I discard down to hand size and pass to Chris. Chris pays for his artifacts and draws. He casts Gauntlet of Power, choosing blue, and goes to copy a Sludge Monster with the Mirage Mirror. Derek responds by using Path to Exile on the monster, and Chris settles with making Mirage Mirror a copy of Shadrix instead after activating it. Going to combat, Chris gives his team a plus one plus one counter with Shadrix, and makes Derek draw a card and lose a life, and then swings Shadrix and the Blind Seer at him. Derek blocks Shadrix with the Archon of Ameria, and Chris's Blind Seer gets through, and the Sword Trigger lets him grab a land. Elenda also gets two plus one plus one counters from seeing other creatures dying, which Mark remembers to do later in the turn. In his post-combat main phase, Chris plays a Chamber of Manipulation onto an island, and activates it to try and steal the real Shadrix, which Mark sacrifices in response. After that, Chris passes, and Mark makes a Soldier and grabs a land on his end step thanks to the Keeper trigger. Mark sacrifices a token to pay for his artifacts, and this also pumps a Lenda, and then draws for turn. He plays a Bajuka Bog as his land for turn, targeting Derek, who responds with Honor the Fallen to exile all creature cards from all graveyards, and gains 5 life. Moving to combat, Mark swings a Lenda and the Sanctum Seeker at Chris, with the Seeker draining the table for 2. Chris blocks a Lenda with Weatherseed Fairies, and then turns a Lenda red to stop the lifelink, although she doesn't die because of Dolmen Gate. In his second main phase, Mark casts a Dreadfeast Demon, and passes, sacrificing the Vampire token to make a copy of the Demon, which untaps all creatures with the Intruder Alarm as it comes in. Derek pays for his artifacts and draws. He plays an Esper Sentinel and a Soul Ring, and then a Crystal Chimes. After that, he passes, and during his end step, I use March of the Swirling Mists on Kataki. I draw and play a Plains. I then crew up the Caravan, and I use the Caravan to crew up the Mindlink Mech to make it a copy of the Caravan, and follow up by casting Karn Silver Golem. With the creatures untapping from Karn coming in, with Karn coming in I get an Intruder Alarm trigger, and responding to it I have Karn make Shorakai into a creature. At this point I have assembled a combo, 
which allows me to tap my two cultivators, making two mana of whatever I want, and then activating Shorkai for one, making a pilot, and then untapping all of my creatures. I'm able to do this and continually loot through my library as much as I want, until I want to stop. Once I'm happy with the amount of cards in hand, I cast a Black Staff of Waterdeep, Mecha Titan Core, Thran Dynamo, Mobile Garrison, Mirrored and Besieged, and Born to Drive, targeting Shorakai. I then dig a bit more, casting a Cyber Drive Awakener. I then cast a Surge Hacker Mech and use its ETB trigger to take out one of Mark's demons, and follow up using Swords to Plowshares to take the other one out and clear the way. I crew the Shorkai and send it at Mark in the air for lethal commander damage. And during my end step, I make Derek lose the game with Mirrored and Besieged, and then pass to Chris. Chris draws, and plays a Lanowin Selfit Empress. He then makes the Mirage Mirror a copy of Shorakai, and activates it to draw two and discard one. Chris is then able to do his own sort of intruder alarm loop, but doesn't net any mana like I could. He eventually casts a Lighthouse Chronologist, and levels it up to 7, and then activates Shorakai some more. However, he's unable to find a Blue Sun Zenith or another draw effect to kill me, and he scoops it up as he faces lethal from me. Game review time. So, Blind Seer, not a card I see very often at the head of a commander deck. I love these kind of commanders because it forces you to build a bit restrictively, and in Chris's case he picked a lot of cards that either had protection from colors or granted it, which allowed him to basically have fun with his activated ability of his commander, basically protecting it from spells or helping him get through for combat damage. I think Alenda might be the best Orzhov Aristocrats commander. She checks off a lot of boxes that people want in those kind of decks, where she basically cares about other creatures dying, gets bigger and basically becomes a threat, and if there's a board wipe, replaces herself in a better way by filling the board with tokens. I think Derek's deck was just a full-on mono-white stacks deck, because it seemed like he had a lot of hate pieces early on in the game, and pretty much throughout the entire game. His deck was particularly well positioned against mine, since it basically meant that I'd always have to pay upwards of 2 plus mana per turn to keep my stuff around if I wanted it. Shorakai unfortunately suffers very heavily from Gataki-like effects, but I was able to do it, and using that Cultivator Caravan and the Mindlink mech was beautiful, and I loved it so much. Intruder Alarm really helps the deck go off, and while it's a very powerful and disruptive card, I actually don't find that I abuse it all that much outside of this particular line, where I'm basically filming the board with pilots and drawing a bunch of cards. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.